changing laws. 1955, Rosa Parks sat in. Dr. King joined her and went to another level. I once asked Mrs. Parks, why did you go to the back of the bus? Given the risk involved, you could have been beaten or killed, you should have were arrested. What happened? He said, I thought about going to the back, and I thought about Emmett Till. I couldn't go back. He was lynched in 1955. One sense one sees the growth of our struggle, why you must not be discouraged. August 8, 1955, Emmett Till was lynched, sent to the whistle of a white lady, he was killed. And it was just as if those killers were justified. They didn't pursue them for 40 years. August 8, 1955. August 28, 1963, Dr. King speaking in Washington about dreaming beyond our predicament, about honoring broken promises, just eight years to the day. August 28, 2008, President Barack Obama nominated the Democratic leader in Delta, Colorado, one sees the evolution of our struggle. 1955, we won the boycott, the one that we won the lawsuit affirm our right to sit where we choose not to be limited or see by race. 1965, the voting rights struggle, I might fast forward. But you know race still operates. Normally good blacks not vote, white women couldn't serve on juries. Farmers who couldn't pay poor taxes couldn't vote either. The same system. We kept on fighting, building alliances in 1970, 18 years after the right to vote. All you want if you're old enough to serve in the war, you're old enough to vote, and on that basis, 18 years got the right to vote. In 1974, we made another case for students, and that was that you should be able to vote on the campus where you attend school, or call a residence. If you were living in Iowa in school and you were from New York, you should have to go all the way home just to vote. That denies equal access. You shouldn't have to vote absentee and you're not done on a regular basis. You should be able to vote where you attend school. We won that case. So last year when President Barack ran, whole dormitories could become precincts. You should have the right to vote where you attend school with the ability of enlivening young people. In 1975, the more difficult battle was to get bilingual voting, both in your first language, maybe Eastern European language, maybe French or German, maybe Russian language, maybe Native American, uh, maybe uh, Spanish. And so that made the tent bigger, which you could vote bilingual and multilingual under that tent. We kept moving. I first heard in 1984, sure how these structures operate, you can have the right to vote, but schemes to disenfranchise the vote. We sought to democratize the process. They used gerrymandering with the lines and annexation at large, role perking schemes to lock us out. But we ran and we had far more popular votes than we had delegates. We said, but this is unjust. The threshold was too high and wanted to take all. It made it more difficult to become delegate and even more difficult to win. So we fought for something called proportionality. If you get 30% of the vote, then you get 30% of the delegates. Um, if you get 15% threshold, you are a delegate. We have young people changing the rules. So about 2008, when President Barack ran, you the Clinton won California by small margin, Texas by small margin, Ohio by small margin, Pennsylvania. On the old rules of winning take all, she would have been the winner. We democratize democracy. Finding structures, the nine structures of oppression. That's part of this long, this so he really ran the last lap of a 60 year race, driven by long business runners, some of whom did not make it themselves to the finish line, but they laid the ground, they put our walls so we can now build bridges. What you learn from that process, the first thing you learn is that the race does not with the swift, not with the strong of those who endure. You have to be a willing, long piece of front. Second, that the, those who knock down walls or often not carry the ball across the line because they'll be bruised and scarred and be less acceptable. Because they are those who are willing to knock down the walls, uh, that it might happen. Uh, but I think of today, 
about that lawless victory. It's midday in our politics of midnight in our economy. Because while we change the face of the system, its infrastructure, its bankers are largely intact. Rules to protect the powerful are largely intact. So we have a new pilot. The plane is simply owned by forces beyond the boat. So that's even more struggle to do. What keeps me inspired, the part keeps me moving on in this battle, is uh, Brother Shiva, I see rays of hope because I see what's possible if we keep fighting. That is this uh, friends of the day and much of the world about the World Cup in South Africa. That has this fascination with the World Cup. And as I observed it, most players playing cannot say hello to the other team that's playing this. They can't speak, for the most part, the same language. On that, what makes in this heated global contest, where the USA is about to play Ghana, this huge global contest, what makes it so different? What makes it much like our dream of a society free of a racial judgment? Is that the teams are more multiracial and more multicultural, and we tend to pull for teams by region, not by race, a uniform color, not by skin color. What's happening on that soccer field it allows people to rise above race and choose reason? Uniform color, not skin color, region, and not race. What's happening? Well, the conditions make it so. The structural conditions make it so. If you have a size 10 foot and a size 8 shoe, whether you are white, black, brown, male, female, no matter how much you maneuver, you'll get a corn on your toe because the foot's too big for the shoe. There's something structurally, uh, a structural malfunction. On the soccer field, on the soccer field, the playing field is even. And the rules are public. And the goals are clear. And the referee is more or less fair. And on those conditions, you cannot determine a person by their previous degree of servitude or background. The rich countries, France and Britain and the U.S. don't, don't uh, inherit some points. The poor countries, the Argentinas of the world, or the Brazils are not diminished because of their economic condition. On that field, playing for even, rules public, goals clear, referees slayer. The winner wins with grace. The loser loses the dignity. With all the excitement, there are no riots. There are no fights. Because there's something wrong with him. What your disposition is, is that it was fair. You saw it. It was transparent. Even playing field, public rules, clear goals. That's what we fight for and access to education, and even playing field. Access to health care. We want to democratize the economy as we democratize in politics. As we fight not only individual acts of racism, but structural racism that denies people because in effort and excellence means a lot. Inheritance and access means even more on the on injustice. The notion that some people have royal blood and others have other kinds of blood. Ain't no such thing. All of our blood is royal. And it's all this. All blood is royal and all people are chosen. Say all blood. Repeat all blood is royal. And all people are chosen. Everybody. If somebody, everybody matters. In this new evolving Europe, 
that is an evolution taking place. And that's why you have a new set of challenges. Countries that were once kind of one ethnic group countries, one language, one ethnic group countries. Anathema face a certain global movement of people. People who 50 years ago were colonized. Today, then became immigrants.